talking about race is hard. It's hard because we live in a society that is structured by unjust racial hierarchy. If talking about race is hard, then researching race is even harder. One scholar has made researching race in this country a little less hard than it might otherwise have been. Professor Stuart Hall. We walk in the footsteps of giants and we are grateful for their courageous and groundbreaking work. Please join me in a minute's silence to remember Professor Stuart Hall. As a mark of appreciation to Professor Stuart Hall, I'm pleased to, as our final presentation, welcome Elizabeth Harvey. Um, so I think the difficulty with being the last speaker on such a kind of fantastic day of presentations is that I feel like everyone's already said pretty much what I was going to say. But um, so I'm sorry to go over it a second time, but hopefully it wasn't the last repeating one person's presentation. Um, the title of this paper suggests, I want to speak on um, how we, and this is both within academia and kind of in wider society. Sorry. Um, so I want to speak about, speak about how in academia and in wider society, we come to discuss concepts of difference and identity, when actually the notion of race is a biological category, which necessarily implies these kind of cultural and social traits um, is really being discredited. And I'm going to consider the concept of races and racial associations before turning to look at the potential value of the term ethnicity, which was um, spoken about a lot in Professor Stuart Hall's work on cultural identity. Um, so in today's world, I think that a lot of people make the assumption, and this is maybe less in academia, um, but even within academia, and we kind of take it for granted, a lot of people take for granted that within the human species, different races exist. And the concept almost finds its roots in the history of the Western and the colonizing world, as I know we've spoken about a lot today, um, which saw physical differences in terms of skin color, or, or we heard about hair today as well, um, in other people in other parts of the world, and purposely associated these with inherent dif differences that you could find within people that they claimed were more than just skin deep. And Edward Said, the theorist, has pointed out that the Occident or the Western world was constructed as superior, as hardworking, as trustworthy, while the Orient or the Eastern world, what we now look at as the developing world maybe, um, was seen as inferior, lazy, or even conniving as a race. Um, and this was used as a rationale, obviously, for colonization, whereby the darker the skin color, the more inferior you were, according to this formation. Um, and according to the theorist Henry Louis Gates, even in the 21st century, um, race as a set of irreducible differences has actually been, um, been concluded that it's a scientific fallacy. Um, and he points out that although um, race was actually constructed for economic and for political purposes originally, it's actually now dangerously and completely arbitrarily employed across the globe 
and it forms part of our vernacular. Um, and it's widely believed by a lot of people, and it's almost unquestioned, that race is actually a biological category, and even more than that, an essential quality. Um, and Stuart Hall notes that in the British context, and he obviously looks at, he kind of ushered in cultural studies in the UK. Um, he notes that the black experience, and this, this term has got clear racial signifiers, um, the black experience became the identifier and almost the coverall term in the 1970s for talking about any sort of marginalization or any sort of marginalized identity. And it also came to form a cultural space um, where protest against racism actually started. Um, but in his thinking, he's really narrated a shift in this sort of political thinking beyond a racial politics. And he shows that the notion of race or the notion of blackness has actually in itself now become so essentialized that no one, people that don't fit this mold of what um, blackness was meant to be in the 1970s are actually ousted from it. Um, so it's almost like this kind of double victimization that we're talking about. Um, and he says that in this way, uh, now in the 21st century, he called for this racial politics of 30 and 40 years ago to be rethought and actually to be undone. Um, and this, for him, was definitely a very political change. And it involves moving from the need to galvanize protest against racism actually towards a new system of thought where difference was readily accepted and the categories became a lot less rigid. Um, and this also fits in with his wider theories of, on the liminality or maybe the fluidity of cultural identity. And in one essay, he rallies against what he calls this kind of harmful practice of employing essentialisms when talking about identity. And he calls for a more fluid and more plural approach. Um, he states, and this is a quote, that cultural identities come from somewhere. They have histories. But like everything that is historical, they undergo constant transformation. So far from being eternally fixed in some essentialist past, they are subject to the continuous play of history, culture, and power. And I think that this, dem this statement de demonstrates that historical notions of a culture or even of a nation or of a certain group within society can't remain true forever. And that's if they were even true in the first place, which often, as again we've heard today, they're not. Um, because the space in which they're thrashed out moves and actually the parameters of the discussion change. Um, and even the topic being debated evolves. What might be considered heretic in one generation becomes natural to the next. Um, and Hall also wrote that statement in light of a growing movement. He wrote that statement in 1981. And that was in light of a growing movement, which aimed to show that although there were common experiences of being a so-called other um, or a discriminated against group in a racialized world, because he didn't, he didn't say that we don't live in a racialized world, um, that actually there were many more internal complexities that affect the identity debate. And you know we've talked about these today, gender, sexuality, class, the list goes on. Um, and this way he really calls for this sort of binary thinking where we say black, white, um, or even male, female, to be abandoned and to be replaced with the acceptance maybe that everybody is actually multiply positioned. Um, and in his own words, and this is quite a long quote, but he says it a lot better than I could. Um, he says, and he talks about black Britishness a lot, which is why he says black, but always in inverted commas. Um, and this is in 2001, he says, black does not reference a particular group with fixed characteristics whose social being or artistic imagination is determined by skin color genetic makeup or biological inheritance. It does not invoke an essentialized cultural identity frozen in time, which is automatically transmitted into the work and can thus be held to represent collectively all those who belong to a particular race, ethnic community or tradition. Black is a politically, historically and culturally constructed category, a contested idea whose ultimate destination remains unsettled. So this clear rejection of the entire notion of race as implying that individuals with the same skin color should s share a certain set of characteristics and some sort of fixed cultural identity, I think establishes his view that race is actually a term created and kept in existence by those who wish to use it in order to oppress other people. Um, and he details that the influence that using racially loaded terms kind of in this quote, such as black, has on an artistic work, 
Um, this quote actually comes from a book called Difference, which is where he looks at the work of black photographers. Um, and he was saying that a lot of people were, were looking at these works and saying, oh yeah, you know, I can see, I can see the photograph photographer's blackness reflected in his work. And he said, no, this, you can't say that. You can't say that this is contained within the work of an artist. And he demonstrates how grouping people according to a politically constructed category is actually really dangerous. Um, and that the nature of identity has got so many influences that it's impossible and actually completely irrational to try to tie them down to this man-made theory of race. Um, more recently, even than that, he stated of Britain that, I think this is really interesting, the end of the essential black subject is something which people are increasingly debating, but they may not have fully reckoned with its political consequences. And obviously that's what we're doing here today. We're debating race, the conceptions of it, the misconceptions around it. Um, but I would argue that actually one of the consequences that he mentions, the potential consequences, is maybe the ending of the use of racial categories as indicators of an identity or of a history or things like personal taste or cultural output and so forth. Because any sort of presupposition along these lines so easily ends with the kind of absolutist and ridiculous statements to borrow his own one, black people are all good, which inevitably also denotes that black people are all the same. So taking communities and groups where several differences exist between members, as every society is, leaves this kind of semantic gap when you're talking about the very real kind of rights and representations of people, especially people who have been discriminated against. Because he's not saying, you know, the time for protest is over. Um, and Actually, I think contrary to the quote that we had earlier by Toni Morrison, Gayatri Spivak says that actually definitions are necessary in order to keep us going because they allow us to take a stand. Um, and I think that I, that I really agree with that. Um, and I would add to that that maybe prejudice or discriminatory concepts can only be challenged through an articulation of this perceived difference. You can only really start challenging kind of racism or something by talking about what it entails. Um, but once you've said, yes, but race doesn't exist and it's not helpful, then what do you do? And this is, again, where Hall comes in. Um, so to kind of combat this lack of terminology almost, he calls for a revalorization, or what he calls a renewed contestation of the term ethnicity. And I know we've already kind of spoken about this a little bit today. Um, and he says it's, it should be um, renewed in that it would no longer be the preserve of a politics of nationalism or to like, kind of further a spirit of xenophobia, um, as it has been in the past. And again, I'm going to quote a long quote from him. It says it much better. Um, he says, ethnicity can be a constitutive element in the most viciously regressive kind of nationalism or national identity. But in our time, and again, he wrote this in 2001, but in our time, as in an imaginary community, it's also beginning to carry some other meanings and to define a space for identity. It insists on difference on the fact that every identity is placed, positioned in a culture, a language, and a history. But it's not necessarily armor-plated against other identities. It's not tied to fixed, permanent, unalterable oppositions, and it is not wholly defined by exclusion. So ethnicity, for him then, is an individual identity, and it can also be a group identity. But it's self-constructed through a more personal understanding of culture, heritage, nation, language, history, Again, the list kind of goes on. Um, and there are a lot of other theories that have really welcomed this idea and used it to further their own work as well. Um, and I'll just kind of mention one of those quickly, which is Henry Louis Gates, who's this American theorist. Um, and he, again, I'm quoting, he says he wants to stress the departure entailed by Hall's call to separate the concept of ethnicity from an equivalence with nationalism, imperialism, racism, and the state as this proves to be one of the enabling gestures for a post-essentialist recuperation of identity. The problem with the sort of post-structuralist critiques of ethnic absolutism was that they quickly led to a sort of postmodern universalism that foreclosed the possibility of a politics of identity, whereas Stuart Hall's reinstatement of ethnicity is meant to counterbalance that. So I think maybe more plainly speaking, um, the kind of new definition of ethnicity is meant to challenge political attempts to create a dialogue around identity and culture, which actually conclude in these sort of cultural and racial universalisms. Um, 
rather seeing ethnicity as a much more fluid concept, which isn't defined at all by exclusion, allows it to be described and expressed as an ever-changing state and to illustrate the diversities that it actually encompasses. Um, so in this way, I think that Hall suggests moving away from discussions of race and the negative connotations that the term implies, um, and instead the employment of the term ethnicity as a space where identity is self-constructed and can take into account individual differences in terms of history, sexuality, class, gender, kind of the list is endless, um, is really the way forward. And I think in this way, he suggests that constructed racial boundaries can actually be undone and the notion of an essential identity politics can be refuted and therefore prejudice can actually be challenged. Um, and I just finished for one second, um, just by saying that I know in a lot of different disciplines, maybe the term ethnicity isn't always welcomed, but I think from my point of view, Hall's work on ethnicity actually coming at my research from a cultural studies point of view, it's been extremely useful and the only concept I think I've found that allows me to really talk about identity difference properly. Thank you for joining us for this exciting and eye-opening day of discussion about race. I think you'll agree that we here at University College London are doing some wonderful work on race, but we would like to build on this and we need your help in building this. We are engaging in a consultation on how we should take this work forward, so please join the conversation. Thank you.